Should you use the multi-stage YAML pipelines or the classic ones? What are the main differences, the pros and the cons of each one? This is what we will learn today. Hi everybody and welcome back to Coded Dave. Today we talk about Azure pipelines and more specifically about the differences between the newer multi-stage YAML pipelines and the classic ones, the ones you manage using the UI. We will see what are the pros and cons of each one and how to choose between them. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to learn about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub, just click on the subscribe button below and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video like this. This video is structured in three different sections. In the first one, I will talk in general about the pipeline types and the main differences between them at a general level. The second one instead will be about the differences between YAML and Classic for build or CI. And in the third one, I will analyze the differences between them for release or CD purposes. Right, let's start with a quick overview of Classic versus YAML pipeline in general. Classic UI pipelines are the original way Azure DevOps pipelines were created. So you build the pipeline by using a GUI editor and they come into different flavors, the build focus pipeline and the release focus pipelines. The multi-stage YAML pipelines instead is the newer way where you can define the pipeline as a code in YAML format, which you then commit to a repo. Azure DevOps does have an assistant to help you create or modify the YAML pipeline so you don't have to remember every possible setting or keep having to look up the references. But being basically text files and being committed to your repo, you can apply to them all the normal rules you would apply to software development, uh, such as branches, policies, pull requests, linting, and so on and so forth. So right away, we can see that the two approaches are quite different. Let's take a look at the pros and the cons of the classic pipelines. Let's start with the pros. First of all, there is no DSL, domain specific language that you have to learn. So this enables a super fast onboarding. It is also very easy to make quick changes. It takes just a few clicks and this encourage experimentation. And contrary to popular belief, classic pipelines do have versioning. So you can revert to a previous version of the pipeline easily if you need to. Lastly, it supports a greater variety of source control. It supports Azure repos, Git and TFVC, GitHub, any external Git provider and SVN. But there are a few cons. The first one is that the, the governance mechanism is different from the rest of your code because of course it's not code, it's just UI. And also some of the new features, like for example, the environments have been implemented for the YAML pipelines only and are specific to those. So some of those new features are not present in the classic pipelines. Another cons is that it doesn't support container jobs, which are jobs that can be executed on top of a hosted agent, but inside a container for better isolation and control of the environment. And last but not least, it is not the default experience anymore. Now the default experience is the YAML one. And finally, and this can be both a pro and a con, and it depends on your point of view, there is a clear separation between build and release pipelines. You create and manage them in two different parts of the UI, and they look quite different in terms of management and design per se. Let's take now a look at the pros and cons for the YAML pipelines instead. Let's start again with the pros. First of all, it is code. And so you can manage it as a source file, which means that it will go through a standard code review pull request process and so on and so forth. And you can apply your normal practices. And because it's in the repo, when and if you need to revert the source to an early commit, then the pipeline will be reverted together as well. And of course, like all the text files, it is easy to manipulate and change multiple values in one go. And if you think about that, if you need it, you can even generate them from a script. Additionally, Comparing changes between uh, different versions of the same pipeline is much easier than doing the same with the classic UI versioning, which means that it's easier, for example, to identify the root cause if a build breaks. Lastly, they encourage collaboration. Not only, as I said before, you can apply pull requests and code review to them, but it's also much easier if you think to pass code snippets to your peers rather than their screenshot of the classic pipelines. But of course, also the YAML pipelines have some cons. First of all, they support only Azure repos, Git, GitHub, and Bitbucket Cloud. So if you're using TFVC, SVN, or external Git providers, then you cannot use YAML pipelines. And of course, you have to learn YAML. As I said before, there is an assistant that helps building the YAML files, 
So it's not super difficult for inexperienced users, but yeah, it's still YAML and so you'll need to deal with that. Lastly, even though as we've seen before, some features, especially new features, are available only for YAML pipelines, some other features or aspects are not as mature as with the classic UI. Some features are still on the roadmap and some other, like for example, the pulse deployment approvals, may never be added to the YAML pipelines. Right, now that we've seen a general comparison, let's go deeper into them. We will talk first about the build pipelines and then about the differences between Classic and YAML in the release pipelines. Before we move on, hit the like button below if you think this video provides value to you or you find it insightful. Let's talk now about the differences between Classic pipelines and YAML pipelines for build purposes. Let's start with the Classic pipeline. As we know, we have the agent job and then the different steps inside a job. If we click on each of the steps, we can customize the parameters for all the operations we are doing. If we talk about triggers, by default, the classic pipelines are not enabled for continuous integration. So we need to click on this and set the branch we want to do continuous integration from. And then we can also add some path filters if we need to. If we want to change the pipeline, for example, adding a new step, it's as easy as clicking on the plus and searching for the step you want to add. Clicking on add, click on the task and personalize it again. Lastly, let's talk about variables. Variables are a great way to add parameters to your jobs. In the classic pipelines, the variables are global, meaning that those can be reached by any task and job. And as we can see here, we can also specify that may be settable at queue time, meaning that you can change the value whenever you queue a new execution of that build. If we now move to the YAML pipelines, first of all, we see that by default, there is a CI trigger with a branch filter on master. If we want to disable the CI, we just remove this and we set the trigger to none. Also, if you want to have a more elaborate trigger definition, we can use something like this in which we go to include specific branches like master or all the branches with the release slash. And we can specify path filters like we've seen in the classic ones with both the include and exclude keyword. We do have the variables in the YAML file, as you can see here, but those variables cannot be set at queue time. If we want to use the variable at queue time, we need to use the variable UI, as you can see here. And in this case, the variable that we set here can be set at queue time when running the pipeline. Lastly, to add the new step, you just go in the YAML. And again, you can click on the assistant to add the step you want, personalize it and click on add. Next thing I want to show you is a classic pipeline with multiple jobs. Here, we do have two agent jobs. And those jobs can be set to run parallel or sequentially. And each job can be configured to run on a different set of agents. For example, you may want to run the agent job one on Mac and the agent job two on Linux. If you want to add a new job, you just go on the pipeline and you can add either an agent job or agentless job. Agent job is the one that runs on a server, while agentless is some kind of manual intervention or if you want someone to execute something manually. If instead we want to have a YAML pipelines multi-job, we need to change our syntax. First of all, we need to add a more specific declaration for stages and job that we didn't have in a single job pipeline. And then whenever we have a stage, we can actually have multiple jobs. Like in this case, we have job one over here, and if you scroll down, we have the job two over here. And we can also specify here that the first job should run on Windows and the second job should run on Linux. A difference that we can see in multi-job YAML pipelines is that we can have not only global variables like we've seen before, but also we can have local variables specific to a single job. For example, in this case, if I use the variable keyword inside a job, I can define a local variable which is actually usable only within the job itself. Lastly, and still talking about YAML pipelines, we can have a multi-stage CI pipeline. And this is something we cannot achieve with the classic pipelines. At the first look, a multi-stage pipeline can look like a multi-job one. But instead of having multiple jobs inside a single stage, we have one job inside the stage CI, and then we have another stage over here, which contains the job too. And why would we want to do so? Because the relationship between stages is different from the relationship between jobs. If a stage has two jobs, a failure of a job will make the whole stage fail. But between stages, instead, even though 
uh, stage may fail, we can configure the second stage to run anyway. Or vice versa, I can configure a subsequent stage to run only if a previous stage succeeded. And anyway, I can keep things isolated one another if I want to. And finally, also visually, those are different. A multi-job pipeline just look like this. I have only one mark over here, which is the single stage. And then I need to go inside the pipeline to see the different jobs. But with a multi-stage pipeline, I can see straight away that both stages have succeeded. And of course, if I want to have more details, I can always go inside and see that both jobs have completed in both stages. So as you can see, and as I mentioned before, the visual experience is pretty different between those two. Let's now talk about the differences between the classic release pipelines and the YAML pipelines for release. Let's start again with the classic pipelines. First of all, as I mentioned before, there is a clear separation between build and release pipelines. We can find the build pipelines under pipelines, but if you want to work on release pipelines, then we have to go under the release tab. And this is how a classic release pipeline looks like. We can have multiple stages, which normally maps to different environments. And of course, in this case, I have three stages, but we can always add a new one if we want to. And that can be in parallel, like in this case. So stage one and stage four will run in parallel, or I can concatenate the new stage after the stage three, for example, just clicking on the trigger and changing to after stage and selecting the stage. So as you can see now, the stage number four has been linked to stage number three. Of course, I can also click directly on the plus over here to add automatically a new stage after the last one. Whenever you create a release pipeline, you should add an artifact, which is the source, if you will, of the components you're going to deploy. It can be an artifact coming from a build, it can be something that you pulled from Azure repos or GitHub or TFDC, it can be anything from Azure artifacts, and then also GitHub release, Azure Container Registry, Docker Hub, and even Jenkins. You can orchestrate the release between stages using gates and approvals, and both can be set for either pre or post deployment, just clicking on the user icon. If you click on the user icon before, it will be for a pre-deployment approval or gate, while if you click on the other one, it will be for post-deployment approval or gates. And set those approvals or gates are really easy. You just enable it from here and configure the parameters they have. Differently from the classic build pipelines, when we configure some variable, we can actually change the scope from global to individual stages. So we have finer control over the variables in the release pipelines rather than in the build pipelines. We can also enable those variables to be set at release time or when the release is queued. If we take a look at the YAML pipelines instead, we see that first of all, they look exactly like the build pipelines. And this is because there is no difference for YAML pipelines between build and release ones. Or there isn't, at least at visual level and the way you compose the pipeline. Because if we look closely, even though we still have stages and jobs as keyword, we find that inside jobs, we do have a difference. And this is the deployment job. Now, it is not required to use a deployment job in a YAML release pipeline. You can still use a normal job if you want, but the deployment job enables you to take advantage of the advanced capabilities of the YAML pipeline. And these are specifically related to environment and strategy. As for the classic release pipelines, it's common having a stage for each environment or mapping a stage to each environment. But with a YAML pipeline, you also have this environment keyword, which is actually more than a keyword. It allows you to map your physical environment to something called Azure DevOps environment. And this gives you advanced tools for managing your deployment. I have a whole series of videos about Azure DevOps environments. I highly encourage you to take a look at them. You find the link in the video description and up here. We also have this new keyword strategy, and this allows you to define how you want to deploy. If you want your deployment to run once, like in this case, which also means that if you have a series of servers, for example, to deploy to, the deployment will be executed at the same time on all of those servers. But you can also specify something like canary or progressive exposure in which you define that, for example, you want only 10% of the servers or the deployment target to be deployed to simultaneously. And this allows you to define other conditions like waiting time, testing before deploying to the next batch and so on and so forth. 
all the other things we said before, like for example, local variables, isolation, and so on and so forth, still apply to the release YAML pipelines because as I said before, they are exactly the same kind of pipeline. But differently from what we were doing with the classic pipelines in which we had to define an artifact and its source, in here, we may have a release pipelines without artifacts if we want to. Or we can specify YAML resources, which are containers, other pipelines, repositories, and so on and so forth. Or even have a stage before that somehow retrieves our artifacts from wherever we need to, and then passes that to the next stages in order for them to be deployed. Last but not least, classic release pipelines are normally triggered as a result of a build or manually. In this case, we can of course run it manually, and this is the example because I have trigger set to none, but I can also instruct this pipeline to run after another pipeline or to be triggered from another pipeline or even to have a CI trigger if I want to and if it makes sense for me. So my deployment will run as soon as the code reaches master or whatever branch or path I want. And as a last note for YAML pipelines, it's worth noting that we can have CI and CD inside the same pipeline. And this is actually one of the main use cases for this kind of pipelines. As we see at the example here, I have a trigger from master with some specific path. And then I have a CI stage first, which actually build my application, in this case using .NET Core. And after build and test are completed, create a Docker image. And finally, it uses this publish pipeline artifact to create an artifact that will not be available outside of this pipeline, but will only be available to the subsequent stages. And this is a big difference because whenever you have a classic pipeline or a classic build pipeline, you do have a publish artifact step that you can use, but that will make that artifact available to any release pipeline that is linked to that build pipeline. So basically any other pipeline will be able to grab that artifact and do whatever that pipeline does. But with the YAML pipelines, you can use again this publish pipeline artifact instead, which makes it available only to subsequent stages inside the same pipeline. And so what this pipeline does is grabbing that artifact. And because I'm using a deployment job, I don't even have to manually grab the artifact because it does it for me. If I had used here a normal job, then I should have used the download pipeline artifact task, which gives me manual control over the retrieval of that artifact. So this is how you publish and consume artifacts internally in a CI-CD multi-stage YAML pipeline. And this is something you cannot do with the classic pipelines. All right, that's it for today. Hopefully we have now a better understanding of the differences between the classic pipelines and the YAML pipelines, and this will help us deciding where we should spend our time, what to adopt next, and so on and so forth. Let me know in the comment section below which one you prefer, if YAML or classic, which one you use the most, and why. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.